Hi, my name is Steve Stein, and I'm going to break down For Whom the Bell Tolls for You by Metallica. So what I'm going to do is take each section and play it, and then break it down. So if there's a particular section that you've already done before, you can just fast forward to the next part. So we're going to start at the very beginning here, and in order to play this song, there's a few tools that you need to be able to uh, utilize. First of all, you need to be able to play power chords, both on the sixth string and the fifth string. You need to be able to play open power chords, which would be like your E open power chord and A open power chord. You need to be able to palm mute. Okay, and we're going to talk about these a little bit, but as each part comes up and, and we discuss a new technique, again, if you don't really know how to do the technique, take a look at it. If you've already done it before, you can simply just fast forward a little bit to the next section. So the very beginning of the song starts with this. And it does that over and over and over. And what I'm doing is I'm making an F sharp six string power chord. Now six string power chords are made by putting your first finger on the six string. In this case, I'm going to the second fret. My third finger is going to the fourth uh, fret of the fifth string. And my pinky is going to the fourth fret of the fourth string. Now the goal is to strum it twice and then stop the strings. And then play the E. And when I go to that E power chord, what I'm doing is taking my first finger and I'm pressing on the second frets of the fifth and the fourth strings. Now the thing you have to understand about power chords and open power chords, okay, is that the bottom strings don't matter to you. A power chord isn't major and it's not minor, it's just power. So when you're playing, you don't have to worry about like missing the bottom strings or anything like that. And you also don't have to worry about pressing on them. What most people do when they make power chords is they just simply lightly touch the bottom strings to kill the sound so they don't vibrate. So I'm pressing on my top three strings and I'm just lightly touching with my finger on the bottom three. Okay, and then what I'm doing to stop the strings is I'm either lifting the pressure of my hand or I'm taking my right hand and I'm simply stopping the vibration by lightly touching the strings. Now to be honest, most of the time I actually do both of them at the same time, but you have to explore that a little bit and see what's more comfortable for you. Then we're gonna head over to this E power chord. When you hit that chord, you wanna let that ring out. So that's the first segment or first block of this song. Now as far as strumming goes, you could down strum them or you could alternate strum them. Just remember the goal with a power chord is you can't strum any more than what you're actually pressing on over here. So in the case of a six string power chord like we're doing right now, we don't want to strum any farther than the top three strings, the sixth, fifth, and fourth strings. So we stop, stop, play the e power chord, okay? So that's the first block, and we do that over and over and over. And the bass is doing something over the top of that, okay? And then we just keep doing the same thing. Now, after we come off of that, we're gonna enter the second block. And the second block is where most people have a hard time. What's gonna happen is you're gonna come off that first block, and you're gonna head over to that E power chord like we did before, but we're gonna start palm muting. Okay, and this is what it looks like. Okay, so let me break down what's happening there. First of all, you're gonna use the karate chop part of your hand to stop the strings from fully vibrating. Uh, the best way to kind of think about this is if you took that karate chop and you laid it right where the bridge and the string meet, so you set your hand down kind of straight like this, and then you kind of curl over, and what I want you to do now, if you're, if you're not very familiar with palm muting, is just simply turn your volume up and start plucking that string while you're touching, the, or uh, use your pick to pluck the string, of course, while you're touching the string with your karate chop part of your hand here. Now, if I move too far this way, it's just gonna deaden the string. And if I move too far that way, you're not gonna get any sort of palm mute. So watch what happens and kind of explore this on your guitar. See, that's too far forward. It's too far back. So what I wanna do is find that ideal spot where I'm getting the proper sound of my palm mute. And of course I have distortion on my guitar. Um, there's a little delay on there, so hopefully that doesn't bother anybody. Uh, I forgot to shut it off before I started, so. 
There you go. Okay. When you're palm muting, you don't have to press in really hard. You just simply lightly lay against those strings and strum. Now you might be palm muting one string. You might be palm muting more than one string. In this case, we're going to be palm muting more than one string. We're palm muting the entire power chord. So you're going to go back to that E power chord that we did. This open E right here. Okay. And you're going to play that one time. You're going to palm mute it. Then you're going to head up to the third fret six string power chord again. Okay. And you're going to palm mute that one time. And then you're going to move down to the second fret, palm mute it one time. Then move down to the first fret and palm mute it one time. So this is one of the most difficult parts for people to play in this song because it's so fast. It looks like this. So the goal is, is understand when you're trying to approach a song like this, you have to prep for it. Make sure that you really do know how to play your power chords and you know how to play this open E power chord. Okay. When you're making these, if at any time you're, you're having to stop and like do all this stuff with your fingers, you need to go back and just practice that element. What I find with a lot of students when they're learning how to play songs is um, they get really frustrated because they can't do a certain part and then they start getting down on themselves because they think they're not good enough. And the truth is, it has nothing to do with that. It's a matter of breaking apart the element that you're having a hard time with and properly learning how to do it correctly and then putting it back into whatever it is that you're learning how to do. That's what I do for a living, of course, is teaching stuff like that. So what you want to do is you want to take each one of those power chords and you want to practice making the chord, right? I, I call it bouncing. And what it is is when you make a power chord or any chord for that matter, and you practice pretending like your fingers are super glued and you simply pick them up and then you set them back down. And the point is you're training yourself to make the chord in the air. So for instance, if my hand was on my lap and I wanted to make a power chord, I want to make it before I ever get there. So all I have to do is just simply set it down. Okay. I don't want to get to the guitar and then have to create it because by that time, of course, I'm late. So the goal with this part, this, this second block that we're doing right now is in order to play it correctly, you need to be able to move from the E open power chord here to the, the six string power chord very quickly. Then you need to be able to shift. And when you shift, you have to make sure that each time you move down, like your fingers aren't getting squished together or anything. You want to keep this solid, this shape, this power chord shape, and you just move it wherever you want it to go. You move it and you keep that shape constant. So I'm going to play it nice and slow for you so you can see what's happening here. That delay sounds kind of funky. You see? So you have to start off slow. The one rule I always try and tell my students is don't try and play fast, just play fast. If you're trying to play fast, it's probably too fast. You learn to play it slow, and the more you practice it, it's going to gradually get better in terms of speed. But you can't force yourself to be fast at something um, when you're not. You can practice and gain the strength and the knowledge, and with those things, you're going to get faster. So that's the first part. Now, we do that pattern three times. Okay. The fourth time, we're actually going to go the other direction. We're going to go up. And I want to give you a couple of options here of things that you could do with this song. You could play the E open power chord, and then you're going to head to the second fret of the sixth string as a power chord, and then you're going to head to the third fret. And here's where the option is. You're going to go to the fifth fret of the sixth string and strum it, or you're going to go to the A open power chord and strum that. They're the same chord. So you're either more comfortable staying on the sixth string or you're more, more comfortable staying in this position, whatever's better for you. So what I'm doing here is I'm pressing on the third and fourth strings at the second fret and I'm strumming five, four, and three. Okay. So here's what the fourth pattern looks like. Or so either one, whatever's more comfortable for you. Okay, so let me put that together in perspective so you can hear it. Okay, so you're either going to the five up here or you're going to the open A down here, whatever's more comfortable. Now, the second time around, we're going to do exactly the same thing, but the last chord when we're going this way, the last chord that we're playing is going to change. We're not going to go to five. We're going to go to seven on the sixth string and make a power chord. Or we're going to go to two on the fifth string and make a fifth string power chord. 
Okay. Fifth string power chord. It looks exactly like a sixth string power chord, except everybody's moved down one string. So my first finger is on the uh, fifth string, second fret. My third finger is on the fourth string, fourth fret. My pinky is on the third string, um, fourth fret as well. So in this case, I don't want to hit the sixth string. I only want to strum those three strings. So the first ending is zero, two, four, either five, or zero, two, four, A, whichever one. My second ending is zero, two, three, I hope I said three, zero, two, three, seven, and then zero, two, three, two, whichever one you want to do. Okay, so let me kind of recap. We're still in the second block here. If you know the second block, just fast forward onto the third block. Okay, so we've got here we go. Or okay, then we move on to the next ending, which is seven or two. Now let me play that whole thing. Or and remember the last chord we're gonna stop palm muting for. So I'm gonna play this whole block now up to speed. Okay, so I'm palm muting except for the last chord that when we're going up. And you can go either place, whether you're going to five and seven or zero and two, you can mix and match them, just whatever seems to be most comfortable for you. Okay, so that's the second block. You're getting into the second block from the first block by going. It goes right into it. So instead of strumming the E like we were doing in the first block, you're not going to strum that. You're going to start right into the second block. And away you go. So that's the second block. Now the third block is coming out of the second block. So right after we've gone or whichever one you want to do, right after we get done with that, we're going to go back to that E power chord, that open power chord, and we're going to strum the top three strings. So we're going to go and let it ring out. Okay. So again, in context, I'm going to play the end of the second block moving into the third block. Now, needless to say, if you play the, the, the B the second ending, at the second fret versus the seventh fret, it's easier to get into that open E, right? Because you don't have to drop all the way down. But again, that's a choice that you, you certainly can make. They're both the same chord. It's just which one you like better, okay? Which one feels more comfortable when you're playing. So we've hit that E, we're letting it ring out. We are now officially in the third block right here. And then right there, you're gonna hear the guitar start doing. And we're going to talk about that, but right now I'm going to talk about the rhythm parts that go underneath it. Okay, so when that starts, we're officially into that, that third block now. We hit that open E, we let it ring out, and here's how the pattern starts. And this pattern is the same as under the verses as well. So what you're learning right now, uh, because Hetfield isn't actually singing yet, we're still in the intro of the song, but when he does start singing, uh, Make Us Fight, when he starts that, we're doing the same thing. So this is going to count for both of those pieces. So it looks like this. You're going to play that E power chord. And so right there, what I did was I went to the third fret. I strummed it, power chord, of course. And then I strummed it again and kind of slid off the guitar. Now, if you don't know how to slide, you don't really have to. You can just stop the strings. But sliding, you're just... You're just kind of sliding your hand back. And then right before you get to the very bottom or top, depending on what you're calling it here, of your guitar, you want to stop the strings. Like that. So again, there's so many little techniques involved in something like this. If that makes no sense to you, don't sweat it. Just have some fun with the song and just stop the strings. So I'm going to play it again. Then we do it again. But now we've got a second ending. So you're either going to go to 8 and 5 on the 6th string and play power chords, okay, which is C to A. Or you're going to play 3 to 0, open A chord, on the 5th string. Okay, 
Again, you might want to stay on the sixth string because it's easier for you, or you might want to go down to the fifth string because you stay in one box down here. Everybody plays differently, so just decide which one seems to make more sense to you. Then we're going to go back and repeat those two pieces again. So right now I'm going to play both pieces for you. And if you kind of get what's going on, play along with me here. Here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Three, four. Again. Two, three, four. Okay, or doesn't matter, whatever you want to do. That's the next block, okay? So that was the third block. Now we're moving on to the fourth block. The fourth block is the chorus, and that looks like this. Okay, now again, this is probably the harder of the blocks. We had block two that was pretty fast. Now we've got block four, which is kind of tough too. So I'm gonna show you some alternatives of things that you can do here to make it easier for yourself. First of all, you'll see I'm making an E open power chord here, and I'm palm muting it. And then what I'm doing is going to the third fret of the sixth string, and I'm going back to E, fifth fret, back to E, third fret. So think three, five, three. So we have da 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 Okay, so in between each one, I've got three of these open E power chords that I am palm muting. When I go to the third fret, I have to release the palm mute and strum it. So I have, then I do the same thing going to five. Then I go do the same thing going back to three. Okay, now if it's really hard for you to get from here to here, don't make a power chord at the beginning. Just palm mute the sixth string and go. And that's perfectly fine, okay? So instead of making this chord and then jumping up, if it's easier for you and you'd rather do it that way, just play the open sixth string palm muting. Okay, some people like to play it down here because it makes it sound a little bit heavier. Um, and some people like the freedom of just being able to move by not making this chord. Again, please always remind yourself the point of this is to have some fun and learn some cool songs. Um, if you want to make, make it really difficult for yourself, by all means, you certainly can do that. Um, but just never forget the point is you're just supposed to be learning how to play something and have a good time with it. So we've got three, five, three. Now, after we do that, there's a ne next section that comes in and that's going to be six and two. So I'm going from the sixth fret power chord to the second fret. So let me show you. Three, five, three, six to two. Okay. Now. Again, another option. I'm not trying to bore you with options. I just want you to think about this, okay? So some people like to do six and two. I kind of like doing that because if I have three and five, I have six and two that exist on the outsides of those. So it's easy for me to visualize, okay? But again, some students don't want to move all the way up here. So you could play it like this. You could play first fret of the fifth string and then play the second fret of the sixth string. So let me show you both ways here. I'll do it again. So again, explore it. Decide which one feels better to you. Now the second time around, it, the ending's a little different. It goes... Okay, so instead of doing 6 to 2 or 1 to 2, you're going to go 6 to 1 or one, two, one. So the first fret of the sixth string, watch. So whichever one is easier for you, okay? So I'm gonna play both sequences now. This is all block four here. Repeat it. Okay, there's only one other little thing in this block, okay? Right before you do the 6-2-1, one, 
they do two palm mutes in there. I don't know if you caught that. There's two little palm mutes in there. Some students just skip it all together, but I want you to be aware of the fact of where it is. So on the second ending, when we do six, two, one, or one, two, one, whichever one's good for you, there's two palm mutes right there. So listen, very. I'm gonna play it slow. <laughs> Did you hear those two palm mutes? See, those two palm mutes are right there. Again, some students just skip it, but they are there. So the first time you play through it, when you just do six and two, they're not there. The second time when you do six, two, and one, or again, one, two, and one, they're there. So I want you to be aware of that. And again, if it feels comfortable and you can add them, by all means do. If it seems like it's gonna be a royal pain, just have some fun with the song, okay? Now, the next part of the song is, because when we go back into the verse, which is one of the blocks we've already done, we go back into the chorus, which is the block we just did. Then we come out of that, and there's a little solo thing that goes. Whoops, sorry. Okay, so I'm going to show you the rhythm underneath there. And then we have the end of the song, and then that's it. And then I'm going to show you these two licks, okay? So this is block number five now, underneath that little solo thing. And what you're going to do is play E. Now just follow along and watch me here. So I've got E. Then we go to third fret. So I've got this bum, ba da 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 ba da da rhythm i got to play. I might do them all down. I might do them alternate picking. Whatever's comfortable for you. Or whatever you like. Okay, right after you get done strumming that, you gotta get back to E again. So I had three E's, and then I go to G, third fret power chord, sixth string. So it sounds like this again. And then, then you're gonna go to the seventh fret of the sixth string, which is B or the second fret of the fifth string, which is also B. Just like what we did in, I think it was the second block back there, okay? Same idea. So three E's, one G, three E's, one B. And remember, if this gets really confusing for you, again, the beauty of this is that you can stop it at any time and just practice one of the blocks. When you get it built, come back and learn the next block, okay? So again, here's the whole thing in its entirety. back on this, I believe it's the second, third block, okay, the verse block, whichever one that was. We're back on there again, then we're back on the chorus again. So we're almost done. Those are, that's the entire song until the very end. The very end, they have the last block, which is this. So what's happening is you're playing the open E power chord, then you're going to the second fret and strumming it twice. Then you're going back to the open E. And then you're going back to the second fret again and strumming it twice. But then you're gonna to move to the third fret and strum it twice. So it sounds like this again. And the rhythm is a little bit strange. It's not absolutely straight at the end. Um, so you just have to kind of listen to the drums and follow along with that a little bit, but that's it. Okay. Those are the blocks that build this song. You just have to know, you know, the, the big thing I, uh, the other thing I try, always try and tell students is that you have to listen to the song. Like when I play songs like these on stage, um, I can hear the song in my head. I've listened to it a billion times. So I know where the blocks are supposed to go. I know what order they're supposed to go. Um, you know, if for some reason the singer makes a mistake and goes to the wrong place or who knows what could happen. I can just readjust the blocks relative to where that person is and it makes it really easy. So I'm not counting how many times to do it and things like that. I'm just hearing the song in my head and thinking about each individual piece or block. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the, the tail end of this, which we're gonna do the solos. Now there's lots of places that you could play this. 
I'm choosing to play it up here just because I find it comfortable. I like the, the sound in the middle of the neck here. Um, I like playing on the third and fourth strings more than the first and second strings, but you can do whatever you want. Uh, so anyway, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put my fingers in a, in a sequence. When you're learning how to play stuff like this, generally the rule is four fingers for four frets. It's not always the case, but it is a lot of the time. So what I'm going to be using in this position is the ninth fret, the 11th fret, and the 12th fret. Which means for me, that means I would be using first finger, third finger, and pinky. For those of you that don't use your pinky a lot, you can do it however you want, but I would recommend at some point you start learning how to use your pinky. It's 25% of the capability you've got here on your hand. Um, you know, some people just try and avoid it like the plague. At some point, I just think you, you really got to learn how to do it to take that next step. So I am going to be using those fingers when I show this to you. If you don't like that fingering, you, you can certainly try using, you know, one, th two, and three or something. Okay, so when you're doing this, let me show you the pattern first, then sh show you the picking of this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm starting off with my pinky right here on 12, and then I'm going to head over to the first finger, which is ninth fret. These are both on the third string. So I'm going to pluck 12 and then 9. Then I'm going to pluck 11, which is my ring finger or third finger on the same string, third string. So you're going to jump over and back. Then I'm going to head up to the fourth string with my middle finger, which is the 12th fret there. Okay, with my pinky. I'm not sure what I just said there. I'm heading up to the fourth string 12th fret with my pinky. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'm going pinky, first, third, pinky, but this time the pinky is on the fourth string. There you go. Okay, now the question is, how should we pick this? Well, you could pick them all down, and that obviously is the easiest thing to do starting. So let's just try that a little bit, and then we'll talk about alternate picking. After you play that fourth uh, string, 12th fret, you're going to head back to the ninth fret of the third string, which is your first finger, and then back to the 11th uh, fret, which is your third finger, both on the third string. So the only time you're playing the fourth string is when you're going to your pinky. Right there. That's the only time. Otherwise, everything else is happening on the third string. Then it starts all over. Okay, so in order to play that, again, you can play them all down. It's just going to limit your speed abilities when you play everything down. Again, it's great to, to build a great fast down picking. It's awesome. But needless to say, alternate picking is always going to be faster. So, it, it, you know, you got to decide what, what makes most sense to you. If you were going to alternate pick this, what I would suggest is the whole thing is just a complete alternate pick. So I'm going down, up, down, up, down, up. The whole thing is just down, up, down, up, down, up. Which means you have to be aware when you go to the fourth string, 12th fret, that's an upstroke. What again, I'm not gonna get into a big conversation about this, but the big thing is is when you're learning how to play songs, you know, when you're learning how to play stuff on your guitar, whatever it is that you're playing, what you want to do is train your hand to be able to move alternately and not really think about which strings you're on. You just you just move in the hand. Okay? So that's something to think about a little bit. So when we're playing this. I'm alternate picking that, okay? So that's it. And then the last lick we've got is this. So I'm going to explain it to you real quick here. Again, you can always tab it out as I go. It starts off exactly the same way with the exact same fingers, okay? 9 through 12. So I'm going 9. This is all on the third string now. 9, excuse me, 12, 11, 9. And then 12 on the fourth string. Just like before. We're going to go back to the 9 on the 3rd string, just like before. But this is where it changes. Now we're going to head off to a different part. So we're going 12, 9, 11, 12 on the 4th string, back to the 9, to 11 on the 4th string, 12 on the 4th string, 9. So you have... So they're both 9, 11, 12, both strings. Okay, so maybe you just build it up to there. If you have that, here's the next part. We keep going. Back 
to 11, to 12 on the fifth string, back to nine on the fourth string, to 10 on the, on the fifth string. That's the whole pattern. Okay, so... And again, you, if you've already done this before, bravo to you. If you play it in a different spot, that's perfectly okay as well. Again, visually for me, this works out quite nice, and so that's why I'm showing you how to play it up there. So that's a lot. Hopefully that video helps you a little bit in understanding a little bit about power chords, how the segments go, how to think about learning a song, you know, the blocks of a song, how to palm mute, all of those different kinds of things. So you can always look me up or drop me a line if you have any questions about anything.